Yeah, my name is Dwayne or Antoine Jones. Um, I'm going to give you a contest first because one of my main uh, things is I do photography as well. So I'm going to give you a challenge today, and if you get it, I will do a, a professional headshot for you for your choice. Yes. So this is a good one. This is this is a mind bender. So you can raise your hand. Whoever gets it first or the closest, I guess I would say, I'll give you five. So I don't know. I don't think anybody here knows me, so that's good. How old am I? Oh, 36. 33. 32. 38. 21. 28. 28. 27. Oh, 42. 60. All you twos are wrong, so keep going. 60. <laughs> 30 ah, 39. 42. 34. Get closer. 37. 34. 37. That's one of my challenges, but not, not the main one. Um, so I go into, even when I was teaching, I go into that first. First day of class, I was like, hey, I'm not a team buffer. You know, I've been doing this for a long time. So you know, and even with business, I go, hey, I'm, 30, I'm a single dad, 38 years old, almost 38 years old. I'll be 38 in March. You're still um, a team buffer. So yeah, I'm still a team buffer. <laughs> but yeah, still, I, they, don't, they don't recognize how much experience I got. So these are some of my pictures, but let me go ahead and get into the PowerPoint real quick. Um, and I love, I love photography, that's, that's a, a big passion of mine. Perfect. I got it. All right, so, Jones Entertainment Marketing Firm, that's me. Um, I realistically started this November of 2014 and we really, really hit home in, um, in January. I just went full speed ahead in January. Okay, so about me, I'm an Ohio native, I'm a Buckeye for life, uh, don't hold it against me. Uh, Fayetteville State, State E, Fayetteville State graduate. Uh, my degree is in business administration with a concentration in marketing and management. Uh, but I started as an accounting major, so I took basically every course in the school of business except for corporate tax and one other accounting elective. So if I went back, I could be, in, I could have a degree in accounting as well. Um, and then I got my teaching licensure. Um, after that, I, I was smart about it. There weren't any jobs in marketing and management when I graduated in '03. So I stayed in, I got my teaching licensure, and once I finished my teaching licensure, then all of a sudden all the jobs are open, and I went into finance. So I worked in finance for almost six years. It was American General Finance. I think the name changed a couple of times since then, but I was a, I was a, a branch manager there. I think the largest office I had had like 2.5 million in, in holdings, so I was doing that. You know, calling people, trying to give them money, trying to get it back, and you know, the hustle and bustle of that. Real estate market crashed back then, and, you know, 30 days later, I was teaching at Jack Brick. So, um, <laughs> and I did that for almost six years. I left last April to go into photography full time. All right, so that leads me to my passion, photography. Came down from Ohio. It was like so amazing to be in the South. I was taking all these pictures. I was like, wow, it's like really, really different, you know. And um, I got into photography, and almost 11 years later in April, it'll be 11 years. I have a fashion magazine, which are on the table, and. January, I started doing fashion shows and that, that, that whole jazz. Um, so, photographer, one of my favorite pictures, 11 years in it. Fashion magazine is okay. And I, now, I'll, I'll get a little bit ahead of my slide, but I, I, I do the marketing, I do the magazine because of the photography, and then the marketing fuels the fashion magazine. But I don't, I don't realistically do the fashion magazine for money. But I'll tell you about that in a second. All right, fashion show. Um, my whole goal was to like help other people. Um, that's one of my biggest things. Even with my photography, my marketing firm is to help other people. So I've been around the industry for you know this long. I figured that if I start doing things in the industry, I'll help me get my name out there. But that'll also help other people. So I do a lot of live stuff. So the first fashion show I did was in January. Um, the capacity was supposed to be 171, and we squeezed 182 people in there. At least that's how many tickets we sold before I figured out that it was, it was almost sold out. Um, the fashion show in March was 175 people, and then, again, I'm, I'm a creative type, so in June, we did a fashion show at Harley-Davidson, and there was 300 people there. Um, but realistically, it would have been five, but it rained the whole week, so the show was set to be outside, but it rained the whole week, so I had to give back 200 chairs, give back the stage and the lighting and all that, and then, squeeze that inside. So I had 30 minutes to come up with this layout. Um, and um, 
it worked and it was great. And then I did about 12 other smaller events throughout the year. <coughs> all right, so marketing, this is what I got. So I was like, God, this guy's all over the place, right? He's like, he does some everything. So I was like, mm, you know what? I'm like Dr. Phil on my, my Facebook page that everybody's asking me for all this marketing advice and I was just totally ingrained in photography. I was like, eh. Jones, what do I do about this? What do I do about that? And I was telling him, I was telling him, I was like, hold up, I owe Sally Mae some money. <laughs> <laughs> I'm giving away my degree for free. I mean, realistically, I was like, somebody would call me and say, hey, Jones, what do I do about this? Where I go? And I was like, Burr. and I would tell them. And they were like, okay, cool. And I never heard from them again while their business was growing. I was like, man. So, <laughs> January, I started the marketing firm. And it's really been really a blessing to me. Um, so, this is some of the stuff that I do. And then the majority of what I'm gonna talk about is realistically in, in the quotes and the stuff up there. Um, social media marketing, uh, I'm gonna say I'm a Facebook guru, but I'm on, I'm on, I'm on Facebook and, and social media like 24 hours a day. Um, that's one of my quotes that's not up there, you can sleep when you're dead. Uh, I'm literally always, always connected to my iPhone. I'm always on social media, I do a lot of marketing because when I was married, you know, we had this whole little clause about, you know, nobody want to be on Facebook, Facebook is the devil. And, okay, that was cool, but for a business owner, and that's all, pretty much all I use it for. I don't put my kids' names on there and all that good stuff. I kind of stay away from that part. I'll, I'll throw a little cute stuff every now and again, picture of my kids, but you'll never see my kids' names on social media or anything like that. But I pretty much quadruple my business once I start using social media. Um, I'm a big component of the small businesses using social media to make money, and I, I'm proof of that. I'm, I'm going from like, you know, twenty thousand dollars a year to a lot more than that. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I do a lot of brand consulting. Uh, again, I'm a photographer and creative type, so a lot of my stuff is image based. So you'll see me with uh, images, everything. Um, that's the first step we're going to get into if you're coming here. What, what's your image about? What, what do you, you know, when people see you for the first time, what are they going to think about you? Because that's all I get. Eh, I'm in the south, and I'm just just going to be real because that's how I talk. Yo, know, I'm a six foot four black guy. Everybody might not relate to that. Um, so I'm, I'm trying to catch you before you come to kind of kill any kind of stereotypes and give me an opportunity to do the best that I can. So here, my name is Dwayne. Actually, my name is Antoine. A lot of people mess up Antoine, so I don't use Antoine. I use Dwayne, which is my middle name. Um, so now, Antony, Antoine. I don't even want to get. Am I, am I upset that you're mispronouncing my name or am I Antoinette? I get Antonio. <laughs> like, you know, I'm just not. My name is Dwayne. People, they don't know who I am when I come. They see my car, they're like, wow. They see my pictures, they're like, wow. And then they meet the guy, because I'm not the flashy guy. I'm the behind the scenes guy and laugh and giggle, take good pictures or do whatever and go home. Um, so I, I really do, really, 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 really do enjoy brand consulting, email marketing, uh, event and campaign generation. So we'll come up with all these cool ideas to get people in front of you or get you to other people. And then uh, business to business linking is a big one for me. Because um, I don't think that we can do it by ourselves, especially in smaller markets like this. I think that you absolutely positively need to be connected to somebody else um, to grow. So here's some of my quotes that I live by. Never be the smartest person in the room. Um, I'm always around other people that have been around longer than me, picking their brain and trying to, I mean, I don't ever want to think that I've arrived and I think over the last 10 years of photography, I think I've evolved because I'm just, I don't think my work's that good. So that helps me get better. Um, and I always have a mentor. I'm from the Midwest, and I have a mentor that I'm in the studio with who is a great photographer as well, and he's from San Diego. People from California just tell you like it is. <laughs> I take a picture, I'm thinking it's one of the, not, the best things since life's bread. He's like, man, that's trash. I'm like, okay. You know? <laughs> and a lot of other people might take that the wrong way, but we have that type of relationship. You have to be able to take criticism, constructive criticism. So I, I, don't, get, I don't get offended by the delivery of how he says it. Okay, you, don't, you think it's trash, cool, what can I do better? Okay, you need to turn this angle, move the light over here. Um, you need to really, really work on you know, the times that you post stuff and all that for social media, for your marketing. Okay, that's good. And then last thing is what I always said, constant evolution. Um, as you can see, it went from photography to magazine to marketing. And realistically, I guess I've, I've been doing marketing the whole time, but I had to do something to, to really and to make it cohesive so people wouldn't think that I was all over the place, um, which sometimes I am. Uh, let's see. OK. This is the newest thing um, that I really want to talk about that's going to kind of peel in marketing. How, many, how, long have you, 
How long have you been in Fayetteville? Forever. Forever, right? Forever. Have you ever heard this before? Man, there's nothing to do in Fayetteville. <laughs> all right. Man, I don't know where anything's going on. I mean, I've, I've, I've heard all this stuff. So, my graphic designer is uh, a April Mata. I'm going to get her here because she's a fantastic graphic designer as well. But we, we were brainstorming separately, and we called each other on the same day. And we said, man, we wanted, I, wanted, I called her. I said, I want to create something for Fayetteville to kind of streamline that. There's no centralized anything um, in Fayetteville that really, really says, okay, all the events for Fayetteville come to this one strategic location. So we created it. So we're almost done with it. I think we, it says that we're like 20 days, you know, 23 days out, but realistically, we're probably going to launch it next week. <laughs> Fayetteville event site. So now everything um, event-wise, we can go through, um, through this one site. So we've partnered with the Crown, Fayetteville State Athletics, Fayetteville 180, we've talked to, we've talked to NBC Suites. We just landed the IMAX, the Patriot 14. So all the major, all the major events will load through here. So you can have a login. It synchronizes to your calendar without overloading your calendar. So it's an app on here. I'm trying to see if it's on here. Uh, not yet. <coughs> but uh, on this section right here, it, it's a it's an app you click on, so it'll be an app too. So you download that, and it pulls up on your phone. So your calendar pulls up, but if you slide it like you slide your iPhone to make a picture bigger, then the event calendar is behind it. So you get to see everything that's going on without it being overwhelmed. So no, there's nothing to do on on Tuesday. I don't you know, I don't have my kids. I want to have some fun to do. It'll probably be thirty things instead of you don't know where to go. Um, so that that's one of my my things. I'm always again. I'm always looking. I'm always looking to do something um, on a creative end and to build. So, my challenge, obviously, is time management. That's one of my major challenges besides the baby face. Uh, but <laughs> but that, that, that's what I do. I have a passion for what I do, um, and I'm, I'm always willing to help others. And sometimes I put others before myself, so that, that might be my challenge for next year. They try to work on a mean secretary to get me squared away. But uh, yeah, that's me. So, do we have questions? Help? Do you uh, do you charge by the event, or do you charge by hour, or how do you charge for your time as a photographer? As a photographer, uh, it really just depends on what it is. Um, for standard stuff, I have different price ranges and different events. It's something totally different. Like I have packages for weddings, I have packages for like corporate headshots and things of that nature. That's incremental. And then stuff like events, I might, it might be hourly depending on what it is. Like if I came to a, uh, we, we had some type of ball, then I would probably charge a flat rate for a four hour block or something. Yes, sir? You answered part of my question, but um, the website was also interesting as well. What was it called again? Uh, FedvilleEvents.net is going to be the official, the official website when we launch. And perfectly, I think all, I think all we're all we're doing right now is loading vendor contacts. So you have all the events. There's a link for that. You have a link or a page that is information about sponsors and vendors. Mm -hmm. So it'll be like a a list for people to go on for sponsors and vendors. And then it's going to be a link for events that need sponsors and vendors as well. It's interesting because that's usually um, something that I hear. I'm originally from San Diego, but. Um Thing you said about people saying you know there's nothing to do in Fayetteville. Yeah, that. people always say that. And, like, and, and again, and I don't, I don't want to necessarily say sometimes it's poor advertising. It's just it, it's so much going on that it's, it just seems like it isn't sometimes. Um, like I didn't know that like Cat Williams was coming a couple weeks ago until he was already gone. I was like, oh, Cat Williams is here. It was already over by the time I found out about it. Um, so hopefully that alleviates some of that, um, especially with the with the, the help from the Crown and some of the other major parts. All your Fayetteville events. Are you going to allow, or is there going to be a link for nonprofit organizations that someone can submit when they're having an event? Yeah, every, oh, it's, it's everything. Um, uh, outside of like the the whole party scene, we're really not right, going right. to get into the party scene too much because I just don't, just don't want to. I don't want to have you know, man, we're in favor. We got all kind of <laughs> extra stuff. It's but, at the club. Right, we got, you know, we got all kind of clubs <laughs> and too, stuff too. So we, we're, we're trying to shy away from that. It might be major events with, with acts like uh, Kid Capri's going to be here on the 19th. 
at uh, Barcelona. That's, that's something we might get into because that's a major, you know, one of the legendary DJs of all time. Cause that's cool. But then we're having an all white party and come out. No, that's not necessary. But anybody can submit. You know, there's there's going to be like a certain level where you can just I'm having an event. You go in, log in, type in your event. We, we approve it based on the content, and then it goes up automatically. Yeah. And there's little premium services, like you want to add a flyer, it might be a couple of bucks. You want to do a video link, it might be a couple of bucks. But for the most part, if you have an event, it's totally free. And in that event, if you have a website associated with it, could it be a direct link to right. that? Mm -hmm. Is that going to be automated through that, Fable.net? <laughs> nice. So we, yeah, so Good we, idea. We, we're really trying to, yeah, we, we try to figure out a way to really, really make it, um, Beneficial to everybody, and it's churches, you know, small businesses, which I'm really, really component of, because that's really what I market to. It's Jones Entertainment Marketing. So I'm, since I'm in the fashion industry, 90% of the time, that's kind of what I, you know, I have hairstyles and makeup artists, and then uh, clothing designers and all. That's who I mainly market to, and then everything that I can kind of connect to that. That's who I use as clients. You were talking about social media. The question I would have is, how are you increasing your visibility? Uh, to the general public right now, what are besides social media are you using? Are you want to tell me one of my cheats or what? What's what the am I using? Magic algorithm for Facebook. Well, yeah. um, <laughs> the the same one I just told you about. You you should always do business to business linking. So, for example, I take a picture. I'm a photographer, and this isn't rocket science, but not a lot of people don't think about it. I use as many people as I possibly possibly can when I take one picture. So I'm the photographer. He's the model. We got somebody that did his haircut. I'm tagging her. We got somebody that did his wardrobe. I'm tagging him. We got somebody that bought his shoes and gave him shoes and accessories. I'm tagging him. Um, so I went from, I have 5,000 friends, which I, I, you know, I'm in and out of 5,000 all the time, and I'm still debating on starting this whole other page. And I do use my personal page for business. I think for, social, for, fav, for Facebook, that's like the only way that you can really, really, really grow your business. To me, unless you just hit that, some people just hit that thing and they go from like 5,000 people on their fan page to like 500,000. I don't know how they do that. I use my personal page because it's more access, and then I tag the people that are involved. So I never try to do anything by myself. Um, so again, if I have 5,000 people and he has 3,000 people on his fan page, then I have 8,000 people that could possibly see that one picture. He did the wardrobe, now that's 12,000. She did the makeup, that's 17,000. He did the Watch, that's 20,000. And then I have pictures sometimes where I have like nine people tagged on one picture. So I'm having maybe 50,000 people that I could possibly see in that one picture and I've grown like that. So now people are trying to tag me all the time and I'm spending half my day untagging myself from stuff. But I <laughs> <laughs> got a party untagged, or I got some loot picture untagged, or somebody, somebody that never ever supported me or ever been to an event before trying to tag me on one of the events and I'm untagging myself all day long too. Cause I mean, I think my phone dies like three times a day now. But I'm, I'm on. Facebook a lot. That brings up a good point. Um, being a professional, would you ask for permission to tag someone in a photo? Yeah, I, I normally do. Um, and then, then you'll, you'll grow business relationships where if you have something going on, the certain people that you, you work with, then you, after a while you don't need to ask them to tag them. Right. They, they're, hoping, they're hoping you tag your small business so that they get some visibility mm -hmm. too. And again, people do that a lot. Yeah. Yes, sir? Um, you're using social media for your primary uh, method of contacting people, and you mentioned Facebook. Are you using other platforms in social media? Yes, um, and it, it's been a it's been a pull teeth because I'm a photographer first. So like I was really I was really anti Instagram for a while because it was like double work for me because you're a baker, you can take a picture of your cake and post it on Instagram like hey I took a picture of my cake and boom it's great. I can't do that as a photographer. Because people are like, oh my God, he just took a picture. You know, what is that's his photography. So I have to take a picture, edit it, save it to my phone, upload it to Instagram. That's a whole lot of extra work. Um, and, and I found some programs that, that kind of help with that. But it's still at least another two steps I have to do. Because if you see the pictures, like people expect me to have great pictures. So they expect it. <laughs> so it, posting it, if, if I post a picture that's not a professional picture, you know 100% fact that I intensely did that. So people don't, because I work in years for my brand. Like it, it's been people telling me no for a long, and that, that's another quote that they put up there. I, I'm, I'm really, really cool with my best friend, 
I love my best friend. My best friend is the, the greatest person on earth. My best friend is no. If your best friend ain't no, if you're not used to hearing no and blown by that, like you don't care about it, then you will not be successful. Because I heard no from some people eight years later that now are finally telling me yes. Now they're like, oh, I want to work with you. I've been wanting to work with you for a long time. I'm like, hmm. <laughs> I remember the 18 times you told me no. You know, and that helped me get to where I am because people told me no all the time. Because I, I moved to Myrtle Beach after I graduated in the finance and came back. So not only was I you know, not the hottest photographer, right? and it, you know, I have to people didn't even remember who I was then. So I had to, hey man, I want to work with you. I heard you were a great graphic designer. No. Man, you're a wonderful model. I want to work with you. I'm a good photographer. And no. It took four or five years before people start saying, okay, he is kind of all right. And then by that time, then, if you still want to work with him, I mean, that, that's up to you. But yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't get bothered by no anymore. It doesn't, it doesn't affect me. My no, well, I'll find somebody else. Or I'll, I'll figure out a way to, to get you to tell me yes one day. Because like, it, it, it took me six months for Hardy Davidson to say yes to that fashion show there. I went in there one day a week for six months. <laughs> <laughs> hey, what's up? Oh, we got a meeting on Monday. I came back on Tuesday. Hey, <laughs> what's going on? You got, okay, we'll talk about it. Okay, hey. <laughs> All right, she was finally like, you know what? Let's go. <laughs> you know, and the other fashion show helped me because I was like, look, got a fashion show. 171 people were capacity, and somehow we ended up with 182 people there. She was like, okay, yes. And that, it was just that simple. All those no's and maybe's and turned into a yes based off of you know, me going back in there every day. And then we had a great show. They were, they were so happy that we sold out. You know, I don't know if they ever had that many black people in Harley Davidson before ever. <laughs> <laughs> they, you know, they were like, wow. But I mean, and, and again, it helped them because I didn't know, you know, when I think of Harley Davidson, I'm thinking, oh man, these motorcycles are like $50,000. And, you know, and we went to Harley Davidson. It's affordable motorcycles, and I didn't know that they had eight thousand or six thousand or seven thousand dollar bikes. You know, I didn't know that, so it was educational for everybody that was in there. So I think everybody benefited, which is again one of my goals. Don't get offended by no because it simply means maybe later in November. Yep. <laughs> 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 Does stand for November. Uh, I'm always, yeah, I'm all, I mean, I, I totally blow by that now. Um, yeah, I'm, again, but I have a mentor that's like crushing me half the time, so I don't, I don't get offended by much. I'm, I get offended by people that tell me they're going to do something they don't do it, as opposed to somebody tells me no. That's a big thing. On your fellow events page, um, will you have, where if people wanted to be, will you help them market the event? Like if someone pays you a fee? Yeah, but I, and I think, and, and I think again, that's a, again, that flows back into some of the stuff I do. I have a magazine, and I'll tie it back in, in a second, but I have a magazine. <coughs> Paper magazines are dying. There's really no way around me, me saying that. My purpose of the, of the magazine is not to make money off the magazine. I care less about the magazine making money. And sometimes I'll be like, I want to stop this stupid magazine because it's so time consuming to not have a staff. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm. I'm me, my magazine's me. If I die, the magazine dies. You know, there's, no, there's no no staff, there's, there's no secretary and photographer over here and marketing director. I'm it, I'm the janitor and the secretary, all that good stuff. So, the magazine, I'm a photographer. If I do the magazine, then people are gonna see my photography. People are gonna see my marketing, and I'm gonna get business off of that. So the, if, if I only sell one magazine, because it's digital, you know, with the ability to print, if I only sell one magazine, that's just an opportunity for somebody else to see my photography on the marketing. That's it, I mean. So going to the Fable Events site, like, yeah, that, it's obviously gonna be a method for the graph, people to see the graphic designers, amazing work, an app on there, you know, calendar syncs, all these amazing bells and whistles on there. She's looking, she's looking great, and then I have images on there, and I have, I have methods to, to, to shop my marketing firm. Everything has, a, everything has like two purposes, always. You have to. I'm going back to your time management question. I know you have goals for yourself and for your business. Mm -hmm. um, do you create a to-do list? Uh, yes. And I'm have an agenda? I'm getting better with that. Uh, okay. I, put everything, I put everything into my calendar now, even if I have to like, you know, go eat. Because I, I, I'm, I'm already, I'm already slim enough. But that, that's another, that's another great marketing thing is that I eat a lot because I have a lot of other clients that are restaurants now. So I have to, I'm like mandated to go by there and take pictures of the food and eat. But um, yeah, I, I, I've started doing that. You know, I, I have so much going on that I, I'm a tad forgetful. So hey, let's put this. As soon as I get in, I'm like, oh, let me put it in my phone and I'm calendared out. And I found a new app a, 
couple days ago called Pocket Suite. If you schedule anything, try to check out Pocket Suite. Pocket Suite is amazing. You can schedule your stuff. Uh, you can take payments. You can, it sends some reminders. Um, and it sends a reminder from a, another destination, so it doesn't necessarily have to be your phone. So I'm like, wow. So, Cause I asked, I asked my like an intern to help me find something that I can help with time management, and that was the main one. I was like, I need something that you know people are canceling. I'm so nice, and again, I have terrible time management, so I'm like, yeah, I need to collect my money. And I forgot that I was supposed to get 150 dollars from Sarah, <laughs> but not anymore. <laughs> yeah, we got after that, <laughs> so I'm, I'm excited about that. But yeah, I, I I'm I'm full force on trying to figure out ways to make time better because I'm a small business and I can't hire a secretary until. I can hire a secretary, so they're going to work on on, on financial contributions too. But we'll do a lot. Any other questions? Yes, ma'am. Just another comment because I struggle with time management mm -hmm. too. I just want to do it all. Um, when you look at your calendar, you need to prioritize. Not just fill your own. Decide what's busyness and what's really productive. Yeah. So. I have to do what other people have been doing to me, basically. Yeah. Sometimes I just have to say no. Yeah. Um, and I'm getting there. I'm a really nice guy, so. Uh, okay, I'll do it. Well, I need a favor. We'll okay. talk back. Okay. Because you're a nice guy and you don't know who <laughs> <laughs> I got you. I'm like, I'm not, I'm not secretary. Get back to you. I'm going to start doing that. But again, and that's another thing. I always say we. Hopefully, I, I'm growing into this we stuff. Like, we at Jones Entertainment Marketing. We at Dwayne Jones was like, hey, no, we is me. <laughs> people think you're better. Like, it's we, 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 we. Like, yeah, man, we at you Jones. Know, it, it sounds like I'm like this big firm, right? If I go to, if I go to Atlanta, <laughs> if I go to Atlanta or Charlotte, which I'm always gone, and I travel extensively to be a single dad with three kids, but I, you know, I got my car in May, and by like July, I had like twelve thousand miles on it. And I, I travel because I found out that people respect you more out of town. Go out of town, you get a whole new lease on life. You're like, they don't know you, you have the perfect opportunity to say, I'm this great guy. And they're like, prove it. You're at home, everybody knows you. They're kind of like, yeah, I know Dwayne. He would go way back to Fayetteville State. I mean, he's a crazy frat boy. And they might not take you seriously. But um, out of another town, you have this much opportunity. To so I, I actually do make more money out of town um, than I do in Fayetteville, which is no, no hitch. I'll, I'll figure out you know, that madness. But I mean, I, I travel a lot. And I'm always going. I see people, and I learn, and I try to bring stuff back you know, to Fayetteville, to my community that we don't have. For your projects, the project software are you using management software. That I'm not. I need. To, I need to figure out a good a management software. That, that that would help. Again, the, the pocket suite help <coughs> has helped immensely in the last four days that I've had it. Um, so I'm going to really be on that and some other customer relationship management software I really need to get. But then some of that stuff's really expensive too, so you gotta kinda thousand dollars for a program that's gonna remind you when your customer's birthday is or anniversary is it's pretty expensive. But it's it's needed. It really is needed. So yeah. Cell phone and email address, I try to grab those every time. Any person I meet, you call my phone and you just call for an inquiry, I promise you I'm saving your number in my phone. So the next time you accidentally call, I'm like, hey John, I'm like, oh my God, Dwayne's like a Magician, you remember me. I'm like, no, I don't have any clue who I'm talking to. But I saved your contact information, so I know that you're Sarah Watkins. And I put everything in there. I put Sarah, or Watkins, Sarah, model, Fayetteville, phone number, email address. I have everything in my phone. So I, somebody calls me, like, okay, that's John from Chicago who does marketing. And I pick up the phone, hey, what's up, John? He's like, oh my God, you remember me. Yeah, just little stuff like that from a marketing perspective. Goes a long way because they just think I'm just like the, the greatest guy ever because I remember who they were and they only called me once three years ago. <laughs> <laughs> who does your your target audience analysis? I do. Yeah, uh, I'm. I try not to get on technical terms, but yeah, I do. A, I do a SWOT analysis for pretty much everything I do. What's the strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, threats? You know, it, you know, the strength I have is. My, my photography is different than a lot of other photographers. What's the weakness? Time management. What's the opportunity? I mean, there, there's a zillion events that they can do and a lot of businesses and the whole military influx. And what's the threat? Everybody has a camera. Everybody has a camera. Yeah, but when you, um, I'm sorry, I, that just leads me to like a, a thought. Mm -hmm. When you create 
a, a specific product or a series of products, you're you're going to target a specific audience, you right. know, like whether it's females or males, and then their age group. Mm -hmm. And so I was just wondering if, if well, you, well, well, mine is, yeah. I mean, I'm you know, specific. like what, how you do it, or you know, if you have somebody else, an outside consultant mm -hmm. firm I'm, that does it. I'm pretty, I'm pretty much set on my target market for the most part. Since I'm in the fashion industry a lot, and that's where a lot of my clientele comes from. I'm specifically on women, 25 to 44, with like a household income of 30 plus that have kids. That's my target market, specifically. And everything else is this great. You know, all, all the people who like fashion, that's a you know a segment of the market. But for the most part, women 25 to 44 that love fashion have kids and have have you know 30 thousand plus dollars a month a year. And everything else triggers after that. High school kids, for senior pictures, and people that like fashion, want to be models. Everybody wants to be a model. You know, everybody taking selfies. I'm a model. You know, okay, that's fine. If you want to take pictures? I'm cool. If you, tell, if you want me to tell you the truth? I'm gonna do that too. You know, because you know, everybody's a model. But then again, people don't understand the industry. They don't do the homework, which we all do. We open up a business. We did some homework about it. Everybody doesn't do that. Um, but mom, I want to be a model. You're five three. You want to be in the runway? Ain't gonna happen. I'm gonna be real with you. Now, if you want to do print editorial work, I got you. If you, but I'm not gonna lie to you and tell you you're gonna be a runway, you're gonna be a Tyra Banks runway model in year five three. It's not gonna happen. Where, Go ahead. Where do you see yourself in five years? See myself in five years? Oh man. Realistically, probably a whole nother split of myself in a bigger market. I think at this point. Photography-wise, I'm pretty much at my, my, my cap. I don't think I can grow any more in photography. Marketing and, uh, and events, I think I can. That's why I kind of shifted focus a little bit. Um, so I, I, I technically need to be in a bigger market. Uh, that's why I'm always traveling to Charlotte and Atlanta. I do that at least. I normally go to Charlotte once a week. So if my daughter gets on the bus at 6.30, I'm in Charlotte by 9.30, I'm back before she gets off the bus, or the sitter's there and I can come back later. And then weekends, I'm in Atlanta or wherever I'm booked to be. Yes, sir. Okay. <clears throat> Two things. One, respectfully, you can get better. Always push. Always grow harder. Never believe that you're capping. Always continue to know that you can do better and do more. Second, um, what, is the, what do you think is your unique value proposition for Jones Entertainment? What makes you unique? Because obviously you're not the only one right, taking marketing. photography uh -oh. and marketing. Well, I, I guess, I mean, and it's not, it's not realistically marketing as I, I, I do marketing for a model. It's more the entertainment industry as a whole. Um, and, and there's not many people that do it. Like even with my level of photography, I, I, I do a lot of like fashion photography, which helps me market to people that want that image. And it's not, it's not many, it's not many people in town that have an image of a more of a, a fashion, like a New York or Miami style. Look, it is, it is not, so that, that helped me get in that way. And then I focus on small business, which a lot of the other marketing firms don't want to touch as well. And they're like, oh, you only got $150 a month in budget instead of $1,000, you're not going to touch that. And that, that's really big for me too. Because I know when I started my business that there was no way I was going to be like, oh, let me go get a loan for $20,000 and boom, let's go for there. Uh, that wasn't realistic for me. I bought my own camera, I started my own business, and I incrementally bought pieces until I got to where I felt one, comfortable enough to charge people, and two, uh, I was professional enough to get the job done. So I, I never take on jobs that are a bit too big for me. Uh, I take on jobs that I know I can do. Um, if I can't do it, I'm, uh, I, can't, I can't do it. This guy, that's his specialty, or this is her specialty, and I keep growing until I get to the level where I can move up. But I don't ever, ever overstep myself. I try not to. But as far as being capped, you said something about being capped. I don't think I'm capped as far as my creativity and how to get better. I'm always trying to get better. I mean, and technology makes you do that anyway because I bought a $3,000 camera and I was like, yeah, I got the best camera award. And 30 days later, they came out with a camera that was half the price and better. I was like, <laughs> I can't win. <laughs> but, but, uh, but I'm always, yeah, I, again, I, I think my work's okay, but you know, I had to do a presentation and I had to pick you know, my best images. And I have over a million pictures in my hard drive now, and I can only pick 50. And I was like, eh, no, mm, that's a, eh, no. It, it took me like three hours to pick 50 pictures out of a million. We asked the last question. 
Um, before we do, also what you want to look at is um, Google Calendar. Google Docs have customer rate relations management, a CRM system that's free for okay. now. So check that out. Um, what can this community do for you? Let's link up. I mean, I, I really think that, again, I see that in favor. Some people got it. Some people got it, which is the hard part. Some people, if, if you look in, in different segments or whatever market you're in, there's that one group that's already, they're already linked up. They've been doing business for 5, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 years. They're, they're locked in. Um, so I just think that relationship building, team building, business to business, you know, you can go up the ladder a little faster there. I'm a photographer and you're a graphic designer and you're an event planner. Then us linking up helps everybody grow. Um, and that's how I try to really really grow. And that's how I have grown realistically. But it's just about a form of collaborative team that's not exclusive. I don't, I don't ever want to get to the point where, okay, I only work with these four people and we don't care about anybody else. But really team building to grow. That's my thing. Thank you so much.